5-6 reminds us, seek the Lord and live. Seek the Lord and live. So let us uh, continue living. We're in the land of the living. Let us thank God for that. God has brought us here this morning in our right mind. Uh, let us uh, repeat our call to worship after me. A voice comes from heaven and calls us, beloved. Water washes over us and we are changed. A voice tells us we are precious in God's sight. Our love rises and grace and gratitude breathes the Spirit.
there any joys or concerns? I'm sure there must be some joys today.
cabinet, and those who are being appointed, the right appointments being made, all those who govern our state, govern our cities, our counties, to you each and every person who governs all around the world let them know that Jesus Christ died just for them. Lord, we ask all these blessings as you bless us and send us from this place to do your will. We ask in Jesus' name, who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth and earth is in heaven. Give us the say, our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Now we're going to hear from uh, uh, <clears throat> our good old CD player is not working. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> Danny used it when he was a baby. I don't know why. <laughs> but it quit. So, Darby, can you play a number real quick? I know you're not expecting to. Can you play something? over 
over 700 years before Jesus Christ came. So he must have been inspired by the Holy Spirit. No one can predict anything as accurately as this 700 years down the road. So let us go to prophet Isaiah, listen to the word of God. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Sepa in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my eyes and honor, and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up unto the south. Do not withhold. Bring my sons and daughters from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Please uh, turn with me to the New Testament, the book of Luke, with chapter 3. Verses 15 through 18, and it'll be found on page 60 of the Pew Bible, back in the New Testament section. Luke chapter 3, verses 15. Listen to the word of God. All people questioned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he were the Christ. John answered them, all, I baptize you in water. But he who is mightier than I is coming, the thaw of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the granary of the shaft will burn with unquestionable fire. So with many other exhortations, John preached good news to the people. Now, if we start at uh, 21, the baptism of Jesus, John down, we're going to skip 19, 20. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove. And a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Uh, from that passage, uh, I want to draw your attention to let us follow the beloved. Let us follow the beloved Son. Let us follow the beloved Jesus Christ. Let us be good Christians. And do as Jesus did. You know the question. What would Jesus do in this particular situation? Well, in baptism, we're named and claimed as beloved sons and daughters of God. We bring our child to be baptized. The pastor takes the child from the parent, God parent, and the pastor says, Name this child. Uh, next Let's have some baptisms around here, please. Uh, well, the pastor says, name this child. And when we name that child, the child is filled with the Holy Spirit. And our lives are never the same again. When we look at the 
baptism of a baby, we were reminded of our own baptism. In our scriptures today that uh, we hear God saying to Jesus Christ, this is my beloved son. And for all of God's beloved sons and daughters, the scriptures just tell us that as Christians we are loved by Almighty God. In baptism, God has called us, each of us, by name. And the pastor just uh, substitutes for God and says, name this child. Now, we're not God, we're, we're imperfect. But we're here and we stand in the place of God and you can see us. God is with us and in us. And we said, name this child. And God has given to each and every one of us a name. And God has given us honor and God has given us glory. With such radical love washing over us and through us, we are transformed. Christians. We are strengthened to go out after our baptism to transform the world. Now God had not spoken to the people of Israel for over 400 years. You know, when we read the Bible and we pick up the Bible, it's just a little book, just a few pages. Do you know how many thousands of years involved? But God had not spoken for over 450 years to the people. God was silent. No prophet spoke in that time. I know we look at the Old Testament and we turn the next page and it's the New Testament. Well, we just turn one page. is 450 years. And suddenly, this John the Baptist came out of nowhere. And John the Baptist was preaching as the prophets of old. And he gave us a message. A message that's good for all time. It was good then, it's good now. Turn from your sin and live. Turn from your sin to avoid everlasting punishment, damnation. Turn from your sin. Turn to God to experience God's mercy and God's grace. And God's peace and God's approval and life in Jesus Christ. He came to give us life and life for abundantly. Sometimes I sorrow as I see non Christians going through life. And I don't know if any of you have had the privilege or the honor to be able to. Go with someone through the portals of death unto the other side. And every time I've done that, I see my Christian sisters and brothers going to meet the Savior peacefully. I'm not God, so I don't know, but I've seen others who really suffer, go through terrible anguish as they leave this world and transform into the next world. In John's day, he was pointing to the coming Messiah. Pointing, Jesus Christ is coming. John, uh, not John the Baptist, John the Apostle said, John came, he was not the light, but he came to shine the light. He came to show us the light that was coming. God was coming into the world, and God came into the world at that time, flesh and blood, we call it the Incarnation. God came so that we could understand God, and when we see Jesus Christ, we see all of God. Well, John's introduction to Jesus Christ was through what we call believer's baptism. Uh, we call it credo baptism. Remember we say, we stand up and we say the Apostles' Credo, the Apostles' Creed. 
And what we're saying is, this is what I believe. This is what I accept. I believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Son. I believe in God the, the Holy Spirit. I believe. So we call this credo baptism, or some people call it adult baptism. And Jesus was 30 years of age at the time, and he came, and John was baptizing. The Bible said, well, all the people were baptized. He baptized Jesus Christ, and as he was coming up out of the waters, this voice thundered. He said, this is my son, the beloved. That's one of the new translations. When they look back at the Greek, this is my son, the beloved. In you I am well pleased. And then Jesus Christ would come, that was John's baptism, telling us to turn from our sins and repent. Jesus Christ would start right there, his first words would be repent. But John would tell us that Jesus would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And John's baptism symbolized the washing away of our sins. See, until then, they covered our sins with the, the blood of bulls and goats and sheep. But now, through this baptism, our sins would be washed away, they washed down the Jordan, right into the what sea? The dead sea. And so Jesus Christ would come and he would baptize us, John says, not with water, but with the Holy Spirit. And when we're baptized, the old man is washed away. The old woman is washed away. I know so many people, and uh, you know, I've been around a while, like some of us. And some people hate their ex-wives, or hate their wives, or hate their husbands, and they, they hate their brothers, and they hate their sisters, and oh, they hate their parents. Recently, one guy hated his mother so badly he shot her and then himself and 20 something other people, all because of hatred. But you know, the old man is washed away. All that hatred is gone. We now take over the cloak of Jesus Christ, we become Christians. And even though someone may hurt us, we don't want to retaliate. We don't want to get them. We don't want to go and get a, a clip with all these bullets in it. No, we just want to give them the love of Jesus Christ and pray that they too would come to this life. So John says Jesus Christ will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and the fire and we'll be new people. Baptism is one of the sacraments of the church. I, I, I hope you've heard that. It's, you know, we have communion or Lord's Supper, depending on how you would call that, it's the same thing. And we have baptism. These are some of the sacraments. We do it because Jesus Christ did it. And if he did it, it was sacred. And as Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, we do what Jesus Christ did. We just follow it. And baptism allows us to be able to join. To, it's an initiation ceremony, initiation service, that allows us to join with the church, the church of believers, believers in Jesus Christ. It's like a, like a club, but it's a lot higher and better than being initiated into, say, masonry or the golf club or whatever it is. We become part of the church. So Jesus' baptism by fire includes the power needed to do God's will. When the Holy Spirit in the form of tongues of fire fell upon the believers, it empowered them to go out into the world and tell the world about Jesus. Tell the world that Jesus Christ is Savior. And the Holy Spirit came to all of us on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. We'll, we'll get to Pentecost a little later on in the year. We're now at his baptism. When John is baptizing Jesus Christ just before he's launched out into the next three years of ministry. And Jesus Christ
Christ need baptism? He did. He did. But he did that so that we could follow him. He'll be our role model. And so that Jesus Christ gives us this baptism of the Holy Spirit in fire. And fire has two sides. The one side is for those of us who accept Jesus Christ by faith. Who accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. For those of us who can say with our lips, Jesus Christ is Lord. Those of us, we will come to everlasting life in Jesus Christ. Now there's another side to baptism. And those of us who will receive condemnation and God's judgment, if we refuse to repent of our sins, if we refuse to turn to Jesus Christ as our Savior, if we refuse to put our whole lives into His hands and allow Him to lead us, God's judgment will come upon those who want to do it on their own. And they will be thrown into the fire, the lake of fire. So on the one hand, fire washes away and cleanses and burns away the dross in our lives. You know, when you go for gold in, in Guyana, and I did, and uh, you get the gold, you have to burn it. So you burn the dross off and you're left with pure. Gold. And that's what fire does for us, who are Christians, who believe in Jesus Christ. But that same fire for those who do not accept Him as Lord and Savior, that same fire will burn them up eternally in the lake of fire. We have this double duty. When we come to Jesus Christ, His fire gives us life. His fire gives us abundant life. Fire has this duty of separating the sheep from the goat. And some of us want to go on trusting in our own righteousness. Well, we have no righteousness. None of us have any righteousness. In fact, Romans 3.10 says, There is no one who is righteous. No, not one. I'm familiar with so many people who tell me, well, I've never done anybody any harm. I'm good. And they assume that their goodness and righteousness is good enough to meet an awesome, powerful, holy, almighty God. No, we can only go before God covered in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We must accept Him by faith in our hearts. Now we're talking about baptism. Now, some of you are going to have questions. And I've had some questions before in baptism, like, should I baptize my baby? Or, why should I baptize my baby? Now, let me give you the answer. Yes. You must. You must baptize your baby. That's the short answer. Now, there's a lot more to them, of course. Yes, of course, we're compelled. We give them membership in the church. We name them and... I know it's just a man or a woman pastor saying name this child, but uh, we're symbolic of God. We want to name the child in the church as a member of the church of Jesus Christ. And so we baptize our babies. Well, why shouldn't I let the baby grow up and do its own thing? Well, why do you teach him? Why do you potty train him? Why do you teach him English? Why do you send him to school to learn? Why do you do all the things you do? Why do you teach him manners and goodness? How to sit down quietly in church? And why do you do all that? Why not give them the most important thing? If you've decided all that for them, decide the most important thing they could do on this side of the grave, accept Jesus Christ by faith, become members of the church of Jesus Christ. Thereby help with their eternal salvation. And of course, uh, there, there are terms for baby baptism. We call it ano baptism. Uh, you know, you take your child to the pediatrician. Uh, we have taken the pedo, um, like cradle, and 
We have made, we've Americanized it, and we call it pediatrician, but you know what we mean. A pediatrician is a doctor who takes care of children. So we have pedo baptism. We baptize our babies. Why should I not leave them until they're old enough to decide for themselves? Well, they might never decide for themselves. I've come from a tradition where I, I didn't have much to say about it. Two, three weeks old, they take you to the font and baptize you. Uh, but, of course, there are other uh, traditions. There are traditions called credo baptism. Baptism of adults who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And they can make their own decisions. But in my case, I thought, golly, you know, Jesus was taken to the temple in eight days, and then, um, you know, when he was 30, he decided, well, I'm going to be baptized. And when I was about four, I said, well, oh, if Jesus can do it, why don't I do it? And so I was immersed. So I was baptized, and then I could be baptized a hundred times. It doesn't matter. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism leads you to the light. Baptism makes you a part of the church of Jesus Christ, which is important. And so there's this other tradition that's there, which is called Credo, Creed, I believe, baptism. I have made my own decision. Now an adult, I want to be baptized and count. Hopefully, all of us will one day get to Israel and be down to the Jordan. Who knows? But there are these two forms of baptism. Which is wrong? No, no. Which is right? Well, uh, the choice is yours. However, I would hope that we would baptize all of our children. In my case, from the time I was baptized until now, I have been blessed that the Lord has held me in his church. Uh, I would say I held on, he's held me in his church. Yes, Second Peter tells us that the Lord is good. Second Peter 3, 9, he's not wanting anyone to perish, but that all should come to repentance. And there's some other words, and then he says, strive to be found by the Lord in peace without spot or blame. The only way sin for me can be without spot or blemish is if I'm covered in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And to get to that, I must go through baptism. Just as Jesus Christ, to get to his ministry, to the world, he went through baptism. So my friends, we're all human. And you know what? We'll all sin. We'll all fall short of the glory of God. We're all worthy of condemnation, being thrown in the lake of fire. But 1 John 2, 1 tells us, if anyone does sin, and uh, the Greek word for if could be translated since, and it could be translated since everyone sins, but I'll repeat how it's translated. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Well, an advocate is an attorney. You know, if I did something wrong and I got to court, no attorney is just going to suddenly turn up and say, yeah, I'll defend you for nothing. No, I retain an attorney. I pay an attorney. And Jesus Christ paid the price for us. He's the advocate. I call on him. I fall on him. I lean on him. I put my faith and my trust in him. The advocate, Jesus Christ, speaks for us to the Father. This is my beloved child. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved son. Jesus Christ speaks on behalf of us. Because we've come to him through baptism. We've come to him through faith in Jesus Christ. Membership begins with our baptism. Jesus Christ was baptized by man. 
Here is God humbling himself to be baptized by a human person. This is a baby humbles himself, or parents, on behalf of the baby, humble themselves, and give that child to the pastor who says, name this child. And so, my friends, I will encourage you to let us follow the beloved. <coughs> let us now stand and repeat the Apostles' Creed, 881, 881. Together I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please continue to stand and repeat from Isaiah 43 our offering prayer. And our offering prayer is together. All loving and gracious God, you have called us by name and love us for the fierce tenderness. In gratitude and praise, we offer our love now in turn. Love for you and for your people. May our gifts strengthen your work in the world and by creating the beloved community right here, right now. We're going to ask Mary to uh, pray, um, play for us, hymn number 101. We're going to ask Chris. Chris, would you, you come and take me? Uh, um, so it's hymn number 101. Hold on.
Lord, lift up his countenance and give you peace. Now.